My name is Beverly Bose, and I go to the Ladysmith branch on Vancouver Island. The best branch ever. What was your favorite book as a child? Oh, one of my favorite books as a child was the Laura Ingalls Wilder, actually series of books that started with Little House in the Big Woods and went all the way through to the, the cold, um, long cold winter, I think, and, and all the way through to the end of the first four years with her um, marriage to Almanzo. And I just loved that series of books. It was just it's simply written. I liked how it talked of this little girl's bravery and amazing um, attitude in life and just a whole family and how that pioneer spirit i just really liked reading that and and um and even now i find that you know should ever there be an apocalypse i'm going to hopefully go back to carolyn ingles is how to make this that and the other thing because it was just those life skills it was amazing the skills that they had that got them through all of their challenges and dilemmas and the family love that was there they not that they didn't have their their issues but they sure seemed to back one another and it was just a very pleasant read so what is a book that you recently read? Oh, now I've got actually two. You may have noticed I have a tendency towards love of books and more than one at a time. So the book that I recently finished in its entirety is a book called Us by David Nichols. And I just laughed and laughed and laughed with this book. Um, so it's about a fellow who um, in midlife, he's a, he's a biologist and on his marriage is breaking up, you know, and his wife says, you know, basically I've kind of had enough and, time for us to move on they have a 17 year old son that's about to launch so the book kind of goes back between current time and then his memories of when the relationship started between him and his wife and then it goes back to current time and that current challenges and then back and forth very easy to follow but oh my gosh it, he's so human and it just I, you can see all of us or any of us in the characters that are in this book you know the the foibles that we have our our flaws but also our wonderful idiosyncrasies and um, and relationships, I mean, because I can see parts of myself in the wife, I can see parts of myself in him and how we, we make mistakes. We're so human in this life experience, right? And we just have to laugh. If you have, and if you, yeah, have a good cry, but mostly find some humor in it. And I just found the book, this David Nichols was quite funny. And um, I re yeah, really, really enjoyed it and just devoured it. And then I went and got another one of his that I'm also reading to. Um, and, uh, and so I'm, I, and again, laughing out loud, funny. And uh, so I guess halfway through that one. But I want to speak to another one that I'm, I'm reading. Um, and this one is called, Yeah, No, Not Happening. And it, a girlfriend turned me on to this author. Her name is Karen Carbo. And I think, um, yeah, anyone who's female should read this. You know, And of course, I'm of a certain age now. I've been through probably half of my life by now. And just it's around self-esteem and about um, our own sense of purpose, our own sense of ourselves, self-esteem, um, the amazing people that we are and but it's not like a major self-help book but it just it's just again i've just sort of started it all but it says how i found happiness swearing off of self-improvement and saying well f it all and how you can too what other resources do you use from the library the resources that i use at the library well mainly it's the books that i'm after but the other resources often i'll get a dvd uh, to take home because I still have a current DVD player. I'm of an age and a stage where I prefer hands-on kind of um, um, items. Many people are streaming now and, and there is Hoopla out there and I vow to have sometime this year learn how to use Hoopla. Um, um, but yeah, I tend to sort of like the hands-on DVDs and books. I love the lit kits and I don't really get them so much anymore because my girls are bigger, but um, I use, would often get the lit kits and I think that's brilliant. Um, and uh, I think that's, yeah, fabulous. I also love the story times. And I know they've kind of fallen off. Well, can, because of COVID, it's definitely fallen off. But um, in, in years past, they would have story time. And I just thought the librarians were amazing at reading the stories. And like when we first got to Ladysmith about 15 years ago, Lynn was doing, and Lori does them too. Um, but they were just so clever. Lynn had this cat. And honest to goodness, I swore the cat was real the way that Lynn had her hand and, and she was petting it and the cat was all, you know, rubbing up against her. And, and then in the stories, like I just loved how they used props, how they got the kids involved and um, very much, um, I, I just really liked the story time and, and just that hands-on piece. And I find they're, they're just, yeah, again, the staff are so very friendly and very helpful. How do you think your life story affects your relationship with the types of books that you're drawn to? 
my life story affects the kind of my relationship with the books that I'm drawn to in that um, I think I've, I've, I'm always looking for sort of the reasons why I do things in life or um, finding sort of the answers of why I feel this way or that. So often I'm attracted to books that like this us. It's about this human character who like is going through life and um, just things are coming at him. So, and, but again, the reality is we, we almost always create our own reality, you know, with, with, for whatever reason that we do, the subconscious that drives us and, and uh, our, our baggage, et cetera. So I'm, I'm always looking for, again, humor with which to um, um, process that information in myself. So I, I like sort of that self-help bit. I also like books that make me laugh and that human bit that is our journey this lifetime. Um, and for example, like I've, I'm drawn to like, um, oh, I can't think of the author's name, but Man's Search for Meaning. It was this um, uh, World War II um, survivor, um, uh, concentration camp survivor. Anyways. But just his journey through that horrific experience, and he came out of it like. And what I took from that book was like a sense of his gratitude for surviving this experience. And yes, a certain amount of luck went into it, but also like he speaks of this moment where he's up on this super hard bench, and like, that's where they're sleeping because there's no cushion, there's no blankets, and he's so and he's grateful because he's up against a person who's throwing a lot of body heat. And to be having that kind of mindset, like be grateful for whatever moment that we're in, you know, wherever on this rocky path called life that we're on. And that really, I feel like that um, is, is the kind of books that I'm drawn to is where there's perseverance, where there's fortitude, where somebody rises up, you know, from the challenge that is being human, you know? So, and then, um, and again, this, this uh, Karen Carbo, um, and just what she's kind of got to say is we don't need fixing, you know, let's just be here and bring in some meditation, bring in some, some, definitely some tools, but for the most part, just celebrate who we are as, as human beings. So I, I like a lot of books like that. And I also am big on sort of nutrition and what we can, like, there's lots in life that we have absolutely no control over. But I like that I, I firmly believe that the food that we put into our body is going to be the energy that we get out of it. So food is our medicine kind of thing. So I'm drawn to a lot of books that are going to teach me about nutrition or reinforce what I already know about nutrition. And um, um, yeah, that's the kind of, you know, just, and I like clever. I like things that are just well written, you know, and and, um, and Canadian authors. But I just like like a good story with a nice plot. Um, and then again, the women at the library and men. I love David. David is just such a wonderful librarian um, himself there. And um, yeah, I just I just like things that again I like kindness and compassion. So that's the kind of things that I'm drawn to in those kind of books. And what does the library mean to you? Oh, the library, what does it mean to me? It means everything to me. Oh my gosh, when it was closed down for these few weeks, I tell you, I, it's, it's such a structure. It, I structure my day around the library. Often I'll walk downtown from my house here in Ladysmith and the library is almost always on my stop. You know, whether I need to use the bathroom or I just want to say a hello or stop in to order a book, um, often just to say hello to the great stuff. And usually I'm returning a book because I've been taking out quite a few and there's lots of readers in my family. So there's almost always something to return or pick up from the library. But truly the library is everything to me. And, you know, and sometimes I have this little, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. I'll like to move somewhere where there's four seasons or this or that. But then I think, but then I'd have to leave behind the library. Well, that's not going to happen because again, they are just wonders for my mental health and my sense of community. They really do are the foundation of, of Ladysmith, I think. I, I don't think too many people would argue with me on that one. So I just feel like they really support and are, 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 are what am I trying to say? Are, are, they, are the foundation of our community, like I said. What is your first memory of the library? Oh, the mists of time. I just remember this amazing, uh, um, um, we had just moved to Ladysmith, uh, or moved into the area. We had come down from Haida Gwaii and we weren't staying, we were staying in a hotel because we hadn't bought a house yet and just weren't sure where we were going to settle, whether it be Ladysmith or Shemaineness or, you know, Duncan or whatever. And um, so sampled the library because I've always been a big library user. And just, I think it was a woman named Barb Kerfoot who was the head librarian that was there. And Lynn was there and Lori there. And I don't know if they were there the first day or whatever, that very, um, but they were there at the beginning. And again, like I said, story times, et cetera. And my first memories of the library was just a sense of warmth and community. It was like, welcome in. I mean, it wasn't like a literal hug, but it really was a virtual one. Strong libraries, strong communities. <laughs>